So, what are we going to do today? We're going to think differently for seven minutes about cholesterol and aging. I'm not going to mention LDL once. So, <laughs> what goes wrong in this whole process? Problem one. Okay, this is a problem of cholesterol transport. You get localized excesses of cholesterol forming when cholesterol transport is disrupted. If you're obese, you're just disrupting everything everywhere. Your body has nowhere left to put this stuff. It all goes to hell. Otherwise, a more subtle effect of aging operates on the cells that are needed to sustain cholesterol <coughs> transport. Secondly, oxidative stress that occurs with aging causes toxic cholesterol forms to, cre to be created. And these are just outright disruptive of tissue function. They're problems that, that should be got rid of. So in both cases, this is not really the present dogma in terms of how treatment works, which is why I'm suggesting that we need to ask, you know, let's, let's think differently about this. So just focusing a moment on problem one, the broken cholesterol transport. <coughs> now, as you may or may not know, cholesterol manufacture is expensive, energetically expensive. Therefore, we've evolved not to do it in situ where the cholesterol is needed. It's manufactured in the liver, largely, with a fifth of it coming from the diet. And then you have a Rube Goldberg system of transporting this everywhere it's needed to be. And it's needed everywhere. Every single cell needs cholesterol in your body. When it works, great but we could say that about everything in the young body. Aging breaks this down, and particularly in the case of the macrophages at the bottom of this circle that are responsible for taking the cholesterol and removing it from where it gets stuck in your blood vessel walls. That's the real problem here. There certainly others exist due to aging messing up everything that looks like a complex system. So localized excess of cholesterol, however it comes about, is toxic. Cells have a limited ability to stash this or refuse to take it up. And th that can be very easily overwhelmed by physiologically achievable levels of cholesterol. Just get a little bit fat, you're doing toxic harm to yourself. Get old, there is toxic harm going on due to the tipping point problems that lead to accumulations of cholesterol in your blood vessel walls. This disrupts cell function, it kills cells. The cholesterol, once it overwhelms the esterified cholesterol, it becomes free cholesterol, and free cholesterol is explicitly toxic to cell function. This is what happens in the old body. This is what happens in the obese body. In obesity, you get the very prevalent non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH, which is a silent disease and very problematic because it's irreversible at present. In uh, the case of your dysfunctional macrophages in your blood vessel walls, you get atherosclerosis, uh, which coincidentally is also largely irreversible at the moment. Once you've got a lesion, that lesion isn't going away. There's nothing you can do about it using the present standard of care. These are both very large potential markets if you can find a way to deal with this problem. But let's look at the other issue um, for a little bit. The other issue is that inflammation and oxidative stress, which go hand to hand, in aging due to mitochondrial issues, produces these altered toxic forms of cholesterol. The more oxidative stress you have in terms of your dysfunctional mitochondria producing more oxidative molecules than the body can handle, is that some of those are gonna oxidize lipids. And that causes problems all over the place. And one of the problems that you're probably all familiar with because of the work of Cyclarity is that seven keto cholesterol is one of the worst of these. Um, it's implicated in a whole range of conditions in aging. And one of those conditions is, um, is atherosclerosis because seven keto cholesterol punches larger than its weight in terms of the proportion of cholesterol it makes up um, to disrupt macrophage function in your arterial walls. But again, remember that just a lot of cholesterol will do this. It's just seven keto cholesterol is adding insult to injury on top of that. How do we address both of these problems? Cyclarity is addressing the second one. And hopefully this produces a large effect size, something you can add on top of statins. Um, the way you address both problems is you selectively clear cholesterol. But you can't just go into the body and clear cholesterol. It's in cell membranes. If you put enough you know, cyclodextrins into the body where you're actually just grabbing all of the cholesterol out of a lesion in the blood vessel walls, you probably also just turn somebody's blood to mush and killed them along the way because it will also drag it out of, um, of, of membranes. So you need something smarter. And that's what we do at Repair. We have something smarter. We have a combination of human enzymes that act to safely break down only the excess free cholesterol inside cells, the non-esterified toxic cholesterol. 
It also happens to work on modified cholesterols, such as 7-keto cholesterol, when they get taken up into cells. That also gets broken down. So we have demonstrated that this produces very profound reversal of both NASH and atherosclerosis in animal models. It is the major mechanism by which these diseases operate. The fact that you have this local excess of cholesterol that produces toxic free cholesterol inside cells. In the case of macrophages, it disrupts their function, makes them foam cells, stops them doing their job, advances the tipping point to enable the growth of, um, of lesions that will kill you. And in the case of NASH, well, there's so much cholesterol in a NASH patient that it's just messing everything up. The, the whole liver is just, is just a toxic, toxic mess. But specifically, it's a toxic mess because of this free cholesterol. If you can get rid of that, everything else is much less of a problem. So that's this in a less than seven minute nutshell, us and why you should think differently about cholesterol and aging. The why you should think differently is because if you clear free cholesterol, you get profound reversal of conditions that cannot presently be reversed. And anybody who's interested, you know where to find us. Great, you stayed right on time. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, you Happy to take questions. Brief questions. Yes, Mark. Uh, so last year at Foresight, you were talking about delivery, and obviously delivery is still the challenge if you're trying to get enzymes and things. So I'm just curious if there's been any progress personally or that you see as Considerable constant. progress. We work with lipid nanoparticle mRNA delivery systems at the moment, and we've used them to produce quite extensive reversal of NASH in, um, in animal models of the condition. And we are gearing up to, we submitted an interact uh, meeting request earlier this year and we're told to go straight to pre-IND. They weren't going to waste their time talking to us um, at an interact level. And we plan to submit the uh, pre-IND meeting package, uh, let's say, you know, Q4 this year. Um, so, go ahead. We have time for one more. Are the needs of cholesterol cell dependent? So, like, would a hepatocyte need more uh, cholesterol than um, an epithelial cell? And would that affect the ratio of, like, what is considered excess cholesterol? Uh, short answer, yes. Long answer, wow, that's really complicated. And different cells have very different responses to, um, to excess cholesterol. They're in fact, polar opposite between macrophages and hepatocytes, for example. If you stuff a hepatocyte through full of cholesterol, it will say, oh God, no more cholesterol. It will downregulate its receptors for uptake of cholesterol. It will try to stop everything going on. A macrophage, on the other hand, will just say, right, cholesterol, give me. And it, it will take as much as it can, but it's, it's its job to suck in cholesterol. Thank you so much.